right, welcome to Unit 1, Lesson 6. This is the second part. And we have left off with example 4, the fourth one here, for dots, difference of perfect squares. So we want to take the square root of the first term and the last term. Right? And what I always tell my students is, if you are taking the square root of any variable, in order to do that, you literally cut the exponent in half, right? So that would be x to the fourth. That's all you do. So, I have x to the third, because that's half of 6, 3. And y to the power of 1, because half of 2 is 1. 1's a plus, 1's a minus. There you go. If that seems kind of quick, go back to the first video for this lesson and watch me do the previous three. So, factoring easy trinomials. Easy stuff. Here's the whole point. When you draw your two sets of parentheses, all right, there we go. I need to find, and this is really the key, okay? I need to find two numbers that add my middle term, my p value, and that multiply to my c value, the last term. All right? I know I'm putting x's in here. All right? So I need to find two numbers that multiply to be 20. My factors of 20 are 1 times 20, 2 times 10, and 4 times 5. Which set of factors add to 9? 4 and 5. It's really that easy. What makes it difficult is when we start having minus signs here. We'll go over that one next. Let's try this next one. Here are my parentheses. All right? I put x's in here. Two numbers that multiply to negative 72 that add to positive 14. Here's the thing. In order to get a product, in order to get an answer to a multiplication problem that's negative, I need to multiply a positive times a negative. All right? And those two numbers, my positive value and my negative value, should add to 14. Now, people will list values and try to figure it out that way. But for me, what's easiest to do is if my signs are different, I look at it this way. What multiplies of 72 that's different by 14? Right? Well, all my numbers that multiply to 72 are 1 times 72, 2 times 36, 3, oh my God, times 24, 4 times 18, 5, 6, and 12. Those are all the Oh, one more. Eight times nine. We almost forgot that. Those are all the factors that multiply to 72. Which ones are different by 14? Right here. So, eight and 14 are different by 14 values, okay? Now, when I say they're different, because I would have to take 14 and get here. They are separated by 14, okay, right here. But the number is, the, the problem is, do I use a positive 18 and a negative 4? Or do I use a negative 18 and a positive 4? Which one of those adds to 14? This one adds to positive 14. This one would add to negative 14. I want a positive there's a little trick here. If I get my values, the bigger number, okay, 18 is the bigger number, right? That always takes whatever the middle sign is. Okay, so let's go over this again. 
two numbers that multiply to be 72 that are different by 14. Here we go. 18 and 4. And the bigger number, 18, always takes this middle sign. All right? So what's different between these examples and the ones we just did? My A term is negative. I always want to be positive because it's always easier to factor. So what do we do when we want to split the signs of something? Like I want my lead term to be positive x squared, not negative. Well, we either divide or multiply by negative 1. In this case, I'm going to factor out a negative 1. What that's going to do is that's going to flip all these signs. This will turn positive x squared. That will become negative 13x. That will become positive 12. I literally flipped all my signs by taking out the negative 1. And now we're right back to a situation where I need two numbers that add to 12, or excuse me, that multiply to 12 and add to negative 13. So I write my two parentheses here. This negative 1 we cannot forget about. That's part of the factoring. I'm going to write that down there. I know I put x's here. Now here's what you should be thinking. Two numbers that multiply to 12 that add to 13. Well, they shouldn't add to positive 13. They should add to negative 13. Okay? So how can I get a positive product? Okay? But a negative sum. Well, I can multiply a negative times a negative. Won't that get me a positive? It sure will. So what multiplies 12 that adds to 13? 1 times 12. And there you go. If you want to check that, negative 1 times negative 12, well, that's a positive 12. Good, that works. Negative 1 plus negative 12, well, that's negative 13. That works. At any time, if you want to go ahead and try these before I go over them, pause the video, try them, and then I'll go over them. All right. Next one. Factor out the negative 1. Flip all these signs. Positive x squared. Minus 14x. Minus 32. All right. Parentheses. I'm going to put my axis here. Still need to bring my negative 1. Now, what multiplies the negative 32 that adds to negative 14? In order to get a negative product, I need to multiply a positive number times a negative number. All right? And if this is starting to confuse you when there are negative numbers involved, let's just review something briefly. When it comes to multiplication, a positive times a positive will always result in a positive. A negative times a negative will always result in a positive product. Okay, if the signs are the same here, your product will be positive. If I multiply a positive times a negative, or a negative times a positive, those will always result in a negative product. All right, just a quick review. So, if the signs are different, which they are, what multiplies the 32 that's different by 14? 2 times 16 is 32. These two numbers are different by 14, absolutely. So, remember what I said. The bigger number always takes this middle sign. So 16 should be negative, 2 should be positive, and that's your answer. One quick point. If this were multiple choice on the final, they might not write the 1 here. They might just say negative x plus 2 times x minus 16. Okay? They might do that. Or, who knows, maybe they'll distribute the negative to one of those types of parentheses. 
But please know that this here is the same as what I have up here. Good to go. What happens if it's not written in standard form? What happens if it looks weird? Well, this first example, just rewrite it in standard form. My x squared comes first. Then I have 4x. And now I have minus 12. There you go, standard form. Perfect. This is 1x squared. I'm going to go. I'm going to write my parentheses. What multiplies to negative 12 that adds to 4? All right. Well, let's put our x's here. In order to get a negative product, I need to multiply a positive times a negative. So, what multiplies the 12 that's different by 4? Well, 6 times 2 is 12. These two numbers are different by 4. And guess what? The bigger number always takes the middle term. So my 6 is positive, and my 2 is negative. There you go. The next one. Y to the sixth plus Y cubed plus 32. There are two ways to do this. All right, I will show you the basic way. Wouldn't this be nice if this was X squared? And this is just x. If I can replace that. So what I'll do is, let's just call x y cubed. All right? So I'm going to say here, x equals y cubed. All right? So if I square this, that means I take y cubed squared. That still works. x squared is still y to the same. All right? Now, First off, I didn't write the two here. Second, let's keep this in mind. All right, so let's just factor with our x's in there. Okay, what multiplies the 32 that adds the 12? This is nice because they are both positive. I have no negative numbers involved whatsoever. Plus, plus. What multiplies the 32 that adds the 12? 4 times 8 is 32. And that adds to 12. But here's my answer. We did not have x's when we started. We had y cubed and y to the 6. What was x equal to? y cubed. So wherever there's an x, I'm going to put a y cubed. I'm going to substitute a y cubed in for x. And that's your answer. Okay? We're going to substitute an x in for y cubed in the beginning. But we need to make sure that when we're done, we need to substitute our y cubed back in for x. Now, I said there's two ways to do this. All right? I'm going to show you the other way right now. And this is just if you're comfortable with numbers. It just makes complete logical sense to me, and I will show it to you using this previous problem. Now, what do we notice here? Okay? If I have x squared, this exponent for the middle term is always half of what the exponent is for the first term. Meaning, okay, 1 is half of 2, right? If that is always the case, if my middle exponent is always half of what my lead exponent is, look what the exponents are here. They always use this term. Here's x to the first. Here's x to the first. Follow? Let's look at here. I have y to the sixth, and guess what? 3 is half of 6. So I'm still going to multiply and add, but guess what I'm using here? So you can do that without substitution as long 
as long as this exponent is half of this exponent. That means that will be what's here, and that will be what's there. That's what goes in the parentheses. Normally, we just write, if I look here to the left again, normally just put an x here and an x here. How come? Because there's just an x here. Okay? There's just an x there. All right, well, now let's look at over here. We're going to put a y cubed here and a y cubed here. How come? Because there's a y cubed here. How come that works ultimately? Because y cubed, okay, is 3 is literally half of that exponent there. It works every time. Factoring by grouping. This is such an easy thing to do if you know what you're doing. I guess you could say, I guess you can say that about a lot of things. If you know what you're doing, it's easy. Uh, first year I taught algebra two. Actually, the first year I taught pre-calculus. The kids who took the algebra two exam the year before said, can you get our old algebra two exam? Because there's one problem that we couldn't do. It was a six point problem, and I did not teach an algebra two that year. So I got all their tests, and we looked, and that six point problem was a factor by group. And they all forgot how to do it. As soon as I explained it to them, they kind of the light went off and they, they got it. But most of them forgot it on the exam. So you'll see this probably once in the exam. All right? And they always like to, to stick this on the exam once. Factoring by grouping. I'm literally going to group, that's why it's called grouping, the first two terms together and the second two terms together. That's why it's called factoring by grouping, because you're going to group those terms. Now, this needs to be written in standard form, meaning your biggest exponent should be first, the three. Your two, okay, x squared should be the next one. Then x to the one, then this should have zero x's, okay? And factoring by grouping works when you have four terms like this. So we have four terms. Please keep in mind, this, okay, Three terms. This. Three terms. Okay. Three terms. Three terms. They are quadratics. They have three terms. X squared, a number with an X, and a number without an X. Okay. X squared is the biggest term. If we get to this part, there are four terms. X squared is not the biggest term. X cubed is. So, I'm going to factor these by grouping. You've got the first two terms and the second two terms grouped. What I do is I need to factor each one of those individually. I pull out the greatest common factor. But look at this. And the greatest common factor I have here is x squared. If you don't get that, watch our first video. When we factor by greatest common factor. I pull out an x squared, and that leaves me x plus 5. Okay? Now I factor the second g, so to speak, if you will, the check the second parenthesis. I can factor out a two, a positive two. I take out a positive two, and that leaves me x plus five. The whole entire purpose to doing this, and the goal you should have is that what's in these parentheses should match. Okay. Now it's just a matter of rewriting this. Okay? I put two sets of parentheses here. In the first parenthesis, I put these two numbers that I've taken out. X squared plus 2. And in the second parenthesis, whatever you have in here, X plus 5 goes in. So, let's redo that. In the first parenthesis is what I factored out. In the second parenthesis is what was left behind. Okay, and that should match. If that does not match what I highlighted in blue, this will not work. 
Okay, they should match. You want to try the second one? Go ahead. I'm about to do it right now. Factor by grouping. I group the first two, and I group the second two. All right. I'm going to factor this first one. Not only can I take out an x squared, uh, and that's all I can take out. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That leaves you with 3x plus 2. Let's take a look at this one. All right. Now, I can take out a 9. If I take out a 9, that would leave me with negative 3x minus 2. But hold on a second. This does not match this. So instead of taking out a 9, notice that aren't, both of these are positive. It's a positive 3 and a positive 2. I'm going to take out a negative 9. If I take out a negative 9, remember, factor means to divide. I end up with a positive 3x and a positive 2. That's exactly what I want to happen. So, I've done everything I wanted to do. Let's write our two parentheses. And look at these match. That's the whole point. Okay, I'm going to put 3x plus 2 in here. And I'm going to put x squared minus 9 right here. But hold on. You may or may not have noticed something. This is a dops. It's a difference of perfect squares. These are both perfect squares. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 9 is 3. 1's a plus. 1's a minus. This I cannot factor anymore. There you go. This is what the test calls factored completely. This is factored, okay, that's factored, this is factored completely. There's a big difference when you put this word in here. I've seen a problem like this on the exam before, and they say which one is factored completely. And what they do is, they will list this right here, obviously, before I put the square root sign. Now, this, this is part, you know, choice A. And you'll see that hey, that's what I've got in circular. But then I'll put this right here as, like, choice C. Okay? And people will pick the yellow highlight, and it will be wrong. Because they're telling you factor it completely. This yellow highlight is factored. But the blue highlight is factored completely. The x squared minus 9 can still be factored. So that's why it's not complete. Do this way. Factoring hard trinomials in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. This is known as standard form. And uh, when a does not equal 1. Now there are two methods. Okay. I used to always teach flip and slide. But I am going to teach this m method because it seems to be catching on. And I can understand why. And I like to show two methods. That way, you have two choices. You can use either one, whatever you think is simpler. All right? Let's do the M method first. So I literally draw an M here. That's why it gets its name. Okay? I bring my 2x squared down. I bring my... 12, a positive 12 down. Now, what I do here is I take 2x squared and I multiply it times 12 and I get 24x squared. All right? Now, you don't have to draw all the arrows. I'm just showing you. You can just draw the M. That's fine. So at this point, I need to find, just like we did the very first factory, Two numbers that multiply the 24x squared that add to 11x. All right? So basically, they should multiply to 24. They should add to 11. And they're both going to have an x. 3 times 8 is 24. 
And if I do 3 plus 8, that's 11. So boom, we're good there. It's 3 and 8. So I'm going to do plus 3x plus 8x. Okay? Now, if you thought factoring by grouping was easy, you will probably like this better, uh, this method better, because now I'm going to factor by grouping. Okay? I'm going to factor the first two, and then I'm going to factor the last two. So, out of the first parenthesis in red, I can take out an x. And what's left is 2x plus 3. Now, if factoring by grouping works, I should end up with the same thing in the parenthesis back here in black. So what can I take out a common factor between 8 and 12? A positive 4. Okay, I'm going to divide both of these by 4. That's 2x plus 3. Perfect. So now the last step in grouping. Okay, what this factor out goes into one parenthesis by itself. And what it matches here goes into a second parenthesis by itself. That, my friends, is called the M method, and it uses factoring by grouping. This is nice because it practices factoring by grouping right here along the way. Okay, so, so it's kind of nice. Now, for some reason, a lot of people like the slip and slide method better. I think it's because you don't have to do factoring by grouping. Well, let me show you. Slip and slide. The first step we're going to do is we are going to slip the 4 to the back, and we are going to multiply. All right? So now I have g squared minus 4g minus 12, because when I multiply these two, I get 12. Now, here's the slip. I slip and I multiply. Okay? I think the reason people like this better is because right now it comes back to the factor sub method, meaning right here I find two numbers that multiply to negative 12 that add to negative 4. Okay? If you can't find two numbers that multiply to negative 12 that add to negative 4 at this point, then you can't factor this. You can stop because it's unfactored. Now, good thing for us, we can find two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add to negative 4. Again, I think people like this better because now they're just doing this factoring method instead of doing factoring by grouping. All right? Either way. So I know I'm using G's. So what multiplies to be negative 12? If I have a negative product, I need to multiply a positive times a negative, right? And if my signs are different, what multiplies the 12 that's different by 4? 2 times 6 is 12. These are different by 4. And remember, the bigger number always takes this sign right here. So my 6 is going to be negative, and my 2 is going to be positive. Now, this is called slip and slide for a reason. Okay? We slip the 4 out of multiplication. And we do our basic, easy factoring. And this is why people like this. Okay? But we're not done. If we slip, we have to slide. Okay? So keep in mind, initially we slip and we multiply by that 4, right? Now I've got to slide and divide again by 4. Now, keep in mind here, initially, my 4 was multiplied to the back. Now, I'm going to divide the 4 to both of the backs. Okay? And now I simplify both those fractions. And you can see this becomes really easy. I have g plus, well, that's 1 half. 2 fourths reduces to 1 half. 
I have g minus 3 halves, okay? 6 over 4 reduces to 3 halves. And the last step, I like to call bottoms up. Bottoms up, bottoms up. Okay, what does that mean? That means the bottom of these fractions come right up front here, in front of your variable. So I've got 2g plus 1 times 2g minus 3. Literally taking the bottoms and bringing them up front. And that is the answer, and that is a perfect time to stop this video. You can decide whichever way. I could have done the first uh, example, the M method. I could have done slip and slide, making the same answer. And I could have taken the second example where I did slip and slide, and I could have used the M method and got the same answer. So whatever method you like better, that's the one you run with.